Ella Josephine Baker was born December 13, 1903. She was an African American civil rights and human rights activist. She was a largely behind the scenes organizer whose career spanned more than five decades. She worked alongside some of the most noted civil rights leaders of the 20th century, including Thurgood Marshall, A. Philip Randolph, W.E.B. Du Bois, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. She also mentored many emerging activists, including Rosa Parks, Bob Moses, Diane Nash, and Sophie Carmichael. Baker often criticized professional charismatic leadership. She promoted grassroots organizing, radical democracy, and the ability of the oppressed to understand their own world and advocate for themselves. Baker has been called one of the most important American leaders of the 20th century and perhaps the most influential woman in the civil rights movement. In 1938, Baker began her long activist career with the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, a then based in New York. In 1943, she was named Director of Branches and became the NAACP's highest ranking woman. Always outspoken, even in this position, Baker advanced egalitarian ideas. She pushed the NAACP to decentralize its leadership structure and to aid its membership in more activist campaigns at the local level. Baker believed that the strength of an organization grew from the bottom up and not the top down. She also advocated for the involvement of young people and women in the organization, decision-making and political efforts. In 1960, Ella Baker became involved with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. On the heels of regional desegregation and sit-ins led by Black college students, Baker persuaded the SCLC to invite Southern University students to the Southside Youth Leadership Conference. This was a gathering of sit-in leaders to meet, assess their struggles, and to explore their possibilities of future action. Baker saw the potential for a special type of leadership by the young sit-in leaders who were not yet prominent in the movement. She believed they could revitalize the Black Freedom Movement and take in in a new direction. She wanted to bring in the participants together in a way that would sustain the movement, their actions, teach them skills, and provide them with the resources that were needed to help them coalesce into a more democratic and a militant force. Baker remained an activist to her final years. Uh, in 1967, she returned to New York, where she continued her activism. In 1982, she traveled the country in support of the Free Angela campaign, demanding the release of activist and writer Angela Davis, who had been arrested in California as a communist. Baker also supported the Puerto Rican independence movement and spoke out against apartheid in South Africa. She allied with a, num with a number of women's groups, including the Third World Women's Alliance and the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom. Baker was always a very private person and once said, you didn't see me on television. You didn't see news stories about me. The kind of role that I tried to play was to pick up pieces or put together pieces out of which I hoped organization might come. My theory is strong people don't need strong leaders. Baker advocated a more collectivist model of leadership over the prevailing messianic style of the period. Today, uh, there are many people and organizations who continue to pay homage to her legacy. Um, in 1981, the documentary Fundi, directed by John Grant, was produced. Uh, several biographies have also been written by Ella Baker. In 1984 as well, she received an award uh, from the National Coalition of 100 Black Women. In 1994, she was inducted to the National Women's Hall of Fame. 
In 2009, she was honored with the U.S. postage stamp. And today, her papers are held by the New York Public Library. Lastly, in 2014, the University of California at Santa Barbara established a visiting professorship to honor her legacy.